More and more English language teaching is taking place online these days in groups and one-to-one. -one. Now the principles of teaching and learning remain the same across all contexts. But when we teach English online, new challenges arise that we need to deal with. And we do need to adapt the approach that we take in the face-to-face -face classroom to a digital classroom. People are studying in their home environments, in their living room, in their car. I had one lady working from her car, she wasn't driving. On this course, Teaching English Online, we'll help you to understand how to teach an effective lesson online. We'll begin the course by thinking about the market. We'll think about the learners that you might teach and what might be expected of you as an online tutor. The crucial elements of any online lesson are the teacher, the student, and a way to see them and hear them. Those are the basics. We'll tell you about the equipment you need to get started and the platforms that you might want to use. We'll also suggest resources and tools that you can exploit in and out of lessons. So you have to understand your platform and how it works before you start. And then ideally, you should have a practice with somebody else on the other end. We'll give you some practical strategies for developing a good rapport with learners and helping to motivate them throughout a lesson. Because these things can be more difficult online than they are face to face and we'll give examples using teachers who are teaching online today. I build rapport with my online learners in very much the same way as I would do with a regular face-to-face -face class. Um, so lots of encouragement and motivation and praise. We'll also look at how we can help learners to develop receptive and productive skills. We'll suggest different lesson structures for different types of lessons and activities that can help learners to develop different sub-skills. Finally, we'll think about how we can teach language online. You'll have ideas and advice on how to set context, how to clarify language and check understanding, how to give practice and how to error correct online. Because there's a distance between us, I think it's important to try and get to know the learners individually as much as possible. By the end of the course, you'll be able to transfer the skills you have in the face-to-face -face classroom to a digital classroom so that you can produce really effective lessons for the learners you teach and help them to develop their English skills. A successful online lesson is a lesson where your student goes away knowing something they didn't know at the beginning or being able to do something they couldn't do at the beginning. My name's Lindsay Warwick and I'm a teacher and trainer based here in Cambridge in the UK and I'd like to invite you to join Join our course Teaching English Online. I very much hope to see you there. Hello, hello everyone. We'll be starting soon. Okay, hello many people today. Thanks for coming everyone. Hello from, oh, Sebastopol, St. Petersburg. Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. Okay, so um, let's start slowly, right? Um, I will not be able to read all your comments. I mean, if there are many, but I will obviously try to have a look at them. So um, today we have this very important topic and I don't need to explain why, <laughs> why we are turning to teaching online. And um, uh, well, our webinar is planned for one hour. Um, I'm not sure I will fit into this time. I will try to squeeze in, but I'm sorry if it's going, going to be a little bit late because the presentation turned out to be quite big and um, I hope it's going to be useful. Uh, so um, a few words about myself and while other people are coming. 
So my name is Ekaterina Retkina, as you see on the slide. Um, originally, I'm a psychologist, and um, I graduated from Moscow State Linguistic University as a psychologist and a linguist. But I've never worked as a psychologist, um, as a counseling psychologist myself. Uh, and I've always been working as a teacher. So for more than, I guess, 13 or even 14 years now, I've been working as a teacher. Um, I primarily work with teenagers and university students. So now I'm working at Moscow State University at the Faculty of Psychology again. Well, uh, so I deal a lot with psychology and psychologists. Uh, and also I'm a um, Cambridge Assessment English presenter and here I'm um, in this role. Um, so the plan is quite big. So what are we going to talk about today? Mm. We will uh, talk a little bit about moving to teaching online and how it's different from uh, regular teaching from um, sort of a psychological point of view. Then I will share this uh, huge platform that I strongly recommend um, to use and I'll say a few words how I'm using it and if I like it or not. Then obviously we'll talk about Zoom and I'm sure there are Zoom users here. Um, I wasn't sure what audience we're going to have, how well you're familiar with Zoom. So I will guide you through uh, basics of Zoom very quickly. So, um, and I will also mention, of course, how I use it and what, you know, benefits of Zoom we have and how you can actually, um, like, implement it in your classes so you feel more relaxed and that your students like it. So I've been teaching online now the second week already. So it's second week of my um, lockdown at home. So I don't go to work. I don't go anywhere. So I've been um, teaching uh, well, quite a lot um, in Zoom uh, recently, so I'll be sharing my experience as well. Well, um, also, uh, I will mention a few miscellaneous resources, uh, not specifically Cambridge, so different things that I've been using. And also, I want to share Cambridge apps and resources that you might be using for everyday classes or for exam preparation, because we still do exams, even now in this quite unstable times, I'm sure we, we need to think about that as well. So uh, let's start with the psychological um, kind of side of the problem. So uh, challenges and difficulties from the teaching point of view, that's what I've noticed. You might add actually something else in chat if you like. So what I've noticed is that for students, it's much more difficult to concentrate. And if you actually ask them, and I asked my teens, uh, do you feel it's easier or um, more difficult. Most of them would say that, yeah, it's kind of more difficult. I see they're being distracted, they want to do something else, and it's quite difficult to look at the screen all the time. I'm sure you understand me. Uh, bigger distance between you and the students means usually that students are more passive than they are in class, and they actually get distracted by some, you know, drawing, uh, I don't know, eating uh, toys or whatever, depending on the age. Even adults have difficulties concentrating. Um, then we, mm, uh, what, what I felt that uh, it's kind of a few students will be unwilling to participate because they don't like the format or they don't like it yet. So I have a stu few students, uh, university actually students, who uh, refuse to turn on their cameras saying that I don't look good or something. So they, um, okay, sorry. People are saying, okay, if you have uh, sound trouble, so I guess you need to um, um, upload the page again, okay? So uh, some students would be, you know, refusing to do something you ask. Uh, I think it's absolutely fine at the beginning because they need to get used to it, the same as you need to get used to that. So uh, some people think that online, I mean, some students think that online is purely having fun. We're going to play games and we're going to have fun all the time, which is not obviously the case. Uh, yesterday I had a class and my teens were saying, oh, Kate, let's play all the class. And I, well, I had to explain that. Sorry, guys. No, it's not possible. So classroom management turned out to be much more difficult because I'm, I don't feel this the same connection to them and the same power to do things I'm used to. And obviously technical problems. Uh, uh, technical problems, I, again, I don't need to explain here. Uh, if everyone turns out to Zoom or to Skype or whatever platform you're using, there might be technical difficulties. So uh, what could be some strategies, instructional strategies uh, that I've come with? Um, and oh, we have another comment here that students might be reluctant to use gadgets 
that's true. Some of them uh, surprisingly don't want to. But you know, um, I think that after a while, after a week, let's say, if they don't want to use it, and if the whole group is still online, having classes, enjoying it, um, even the most reluctant students would eventually join. And it looks like we're going to be doing this for around three weeks or months. So uh, a few ideas here. Um, uh, again, what I've noticed and re from the psychological point of view, try to attract your students' attention as much as possible. I don't mean you need to jump around, clap your hands and all that stuff, but you need to think of the tasks and activities that um, are going to be engaging because, uh, they again, they feel distance from you, they feel distance from each other, so they don't feel that engagement as they probably could have been if they were in class. Prepare all the materials beforehand. That's probably one of the most crucial things open, upload, draw, find the toys, uh, find the books if you're going to show or print screens, anything. It needs, uh, everything needs to be prepared and open up. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. Again, I've, I've tried, <laughs> it's going to be a mess. Plan more. Um, here, I, as I told you, I kind of, I feel I'm an experienced teacher and I've been teaching for many years. However, I feel that I need to plan as if I'm doing my CELTA now. I'm back to square one when I didn't feel um, I was experienced enough to teach. So I really plan the stages. I plan the timing. I plan the aims of the stage, aims of the lesson. So unfortunately, we need to do it at the beginning, which I see as a new challenge. And I think it's a good thing because if we, um, well, there is something else to learn for us as teachers. So planning is uh, longer and more, it requires more time. So allocate enough time for this. Um, then um, I will look at chat in a minute. Okay, I'll finish with the slide. Manage your time again because we're all at home. I don't know if all of you now, but a lot of people now work from home. It feels like that um, all my working day is now my, I mean, all my day is only work. Uh, I don't know what else I'm doing actually. So manage your time. And if you want to do other things, you probably need to plan them. And especially if there are several people. Uh, living together, you need to plan who is doing what. And if you need, um, I don't know, internet for some lesson in this room, probably in the second room, there shouldn't be any noises or something. So plan, plan the whole family time. Um, with the st uh, students, change activities and pace quite often, maybe a little bit more often than if you do it uh, face to face, again, because of the short attention span here. Um, I think that teaching online is a nice way to develop academic habits. So basically you are teaching them to learn in a different way. And this could be very beneficial for them in future because obviously online learning will only develop. We will survive coronavirus, but I mean, it will develop and uh, they will have the skills. Uh, try to minimize frontal explanations. Like what I'm doing now, I'm talking and talking and talking. And at some point you might notice that you might be switching off. And that's absolutely natural, but it's a webinar. It's more like a lecture format, which is fine. But if you're doing a, a usual communicative class, the same as in the classroom, minimize your talking time. Don't try to save every moment of the class to, you know, um, help everyone and talk. The more you talk, the, the, the less they actually have them there. Let them do stuff. Let them do things rather than talk. Um, accuracy fluency thing. Uh, well, I've noticed that... Um, Fluency is quite, um, you know, difficult to develop online. Uh, there are a few options. I will mention them later. I think it's more about accuracy and that maybe it's actually a good thing to focus on accuracy while we're working online. And um, you can spot the mistakes. You can give proper feedback in various ways. Again, I'll mention this. Uh, so maybe it's not that bad after all. And finally, a few things, point nine and 10, they're a little bit contradictory, but um, you, well, accept the situation we're in, accept the way students behave because that's what it is and they need time to adapt. Uh, tolerate them and yourself in a way. Uh, be curious because uh, your learners want to explore the platform, for example, they want to explore more exercises. So be curious together with them. So if they want to change background, okay, play for a minute with them and then stop that. So give them time to play and be as curious as they are. However, uh, keep this authority that should be in class. Otherwise, if you lose your authority, it's going to be a mess. Like a few days ago, one of my students uh, was changing backgrounds. It was the first lesson and she put Putin's picture 
I mean, the president's picture as a background. And suddenly I realized that I'm, I'm working with, not with the teenagers, it's like a class of teenagers, and suddenly there is this picture. Uh, and well, what I had to do, I like asked, you know, we are not dealing with politics in class, so could you be please so kind to turn it off, change another one. So we kind of agree on the rules, they still play. Okay, uh, let me look at the chat a few bits here. Um, right, um, huge problems with reproducing audio video. Okay, I will mention it, uh, how I do it in Zoom. I actually reproduce videos through Zoom. I've tried it several times, it worked. I'll show you what to do to make the sound better. Audios, I send them and they uh, listen to um, at home. Um, what kind of talks can you recommend for teenagers? Well, it's difficult to say. There'll be lots of things here today and maybe you can, uh, you know, kind of borrow. I work with teenagers, there'll be examples. Um, well, what else? Yeah, acquiring new technological skills. Um, if my internet connection is poor, well, I have my phone which can uh, work as a hotspot, so I use it if my um, um, router is down, I use my uh, mobile internet for that. Uh, cheating with students, well, that's a big problem and it's not only online problem, they can cheat anyway. So I think for me as a psychologist, I would say that's the matter of trust. Um, you, you simply trust them. Well, um, then um, young learners, I don't work exactly with young learners, uh, but there will be a few things about le uh, young learners in this presentation as well. Okay, so challenges and difficulties for you as teachers. Now forget the teaching process. Uh, can you write a few things that you ex you've already experienced as teachers? Like, as for me, I figure out, as, as I said, that my day now looks like I work non-stop all day long because I, I'm preparing before the class, then I do the class, then I do something after the class, and then next class comes in. So it's like never, never ending process. Work and life balance, yes. Mm -hmm. More preparation, absolutely, yeah. I feel I need to prepare more because, again, uh, with all my experience, I still need to do some things from scratch and if in class I could have shown something or opened a book and ru rushed to the board to write something here, it's all difficult. Um, yeah, online boards, eyes problems, yeah, sitting in front of the screen, mm, yeah. I think we're kind of experiencing the same things. So uh, things I've noticed, and I will give a few recommendations again, that's not rocket science, but things that help me. Uh, what I've noticed, we have new regime that we need to kind of um, get used to. Um, you cannot sleep late because you're still working, right? It's not like, I will work online, I can sleep till dinner. No, it's like you, you still have the same thing, though different. You don't need to go somewhere. Um, lost balance between work, family life, me time, how you spend your free time, who you spend it with. And now you are all surrounded by people, kind of, right? Um, it's, it's difficult. Time management, how to plan your time if you're not living alone the, uh, the time of someone else. If you are managing a school online, you are then, you need to manage other teachers. So it's all, you know, hectic style now. New technical skills, um, I've noticed that uh, many teachers, including myself, um, feel anxious and kind of worried about learning all the technical skills and technicalities. What if I fail? What if I'm a bad teacher now? A lot of guilt, a lot of self-blame. What if it doesn't work? So um, it's, it's difficult, I understand. Lower physical activity. After one week here at home, I feel that I, my body is feeling differently. I don't um, walk a lot and I don't go out even for a walk because I'm, again, I'm on lockdown. I think it's correct thing to do now. So I'm working on my balcony, which is not the same. So I, it's, it's very understandable. And generally, I feel high anxiety and stress, and it's not only about moving online, it's about uncertainty and fears that we have generally, economical situation and all that. So um, there are not, uh, I, I don't have clear solutions, obviously, but a few things that you might do. Um, plan your day properly. The moment you wake up, you can think what you're going to do during the day, uh, at what time, and if you want to allocate some time for your rest, do it like from three to five, that's my resting time. I'm gonna read a book or I'm gonna do something. So plan it if you wanna read, watch, 
I don't know, dance or whatever you're doing, uh, plan it and build it into your schedule. Otherwise, I mean, it all goes um, like a mess. Um, rituals here are very helpful because every morning when you go to work normally, you have certain things you're doing, like shower, coffee, I don't know, perfume, you th things you do. Uh, it's highly recommended to do the same things even if you're at home because you kind of trick your brain into the uh, working mode, okay? So um, what else? Um, air the room, obviously. Do some exercises if it's possible. Uh, zone your flat. That's, uh, that means that if you have a uh, work area, continue working there. Don't work from all places in your house. Uh, otherwise, there is no... Um, division so there should be a clear distinction between where you work where you rest uh, otherwise yeah again your brain thinks that that's all about work people who work in bed very often have troubles with sleep which is quite interesting I think um, lower your anxiety and control don't try to control everything that is happening there will be problems there will be students who are not attending students who are cheating students who are not interested um, connection will fail at some point and it's still fine so lower your anxiety here and um, take it slowly. Take it slowly. There will be lots of resources today here. So slow down with everything you, you, you do. Um, okay. Again, I'll look at chat a little bit. Mm. Always preparing. Yeah, continuous process. Mm -hmm. um, what else, people, right here is that... Um, how many classes do you have a day now? Or oh, well, that depends on the day. My timetable is quite uh, not stable, but um, I think minimum four, uh, one hour, 30 minutes each, uh, which I, I don't think I can have more than that. Um, yeah, uh, we sometimes lose less than time to solve technical problems, but yes, I don't think we can do anything with that. Lots of preparation. Uh, so what I'm saying is that, um, you need to find some uh, tricks to help yourself to balance your life and help yourself. And again, take it easy. We're not online forever, but just find benefits in this uh, at this moment. So um, now coming to the next point about presentation, I'm done with the psychological sort of recommendations and, and things. Uh, if you have to recommend something else, please do. Um, so uh, this plot platform, you actually watched the introductory video at the beginning. That's futurelearn.com, that's uh, MOOC, so it's a huge um, learning and study platform where you can do things online. And now there is a beautiful online course, Teaching English Online. I'm on this course. Mm. I'm not doing everything. I'm a little bit of choosing things I need to do. I don't need the certificate of completion, so it's fine. It's a free course. You can uh, go there, register, and try things, and you will obviously find things you will find that, that are useful for you. So. Um, what it offers for example it will guide you through um, online skills and how online teaching skills online how is it different from other skills so for example teaching speaking it's from uh week two i guess material so um problems that we might have here some ideas we might have with teaching speaking how to give feedback through chat box or shared screen um they'll talk about encouraging participation how to do that how to monitor language. Uh, also uh, online, there is an option of recording. You can also use it for your benefit. So they will guide you into teaching things online rather than face-to-face. -face. I like it. Uh, teaching reading, for example. Actually, this is uh, true-false um, statements. We can try to do this one. Uh, so uh, as if you were on the, you know, on a course now. So have a look. There are uh, four uh, sentences here. And could you please write whether they are true or false, like true, true, false, false, or something? People ask to show the name of the course. It's Future Learn. Future Learn. Okay, Future Learn. It's a famous platform. Uh, the course, okay, let me go back for a second. Um, Teaching English Online. Okay, Teaching English Online. That's the name of the course. So, yeah, coming back to this true, false. Okay, the first one, the structure of a reading lesson is different in an online lesson. Yeah, people write it's false, thank you. It is false because the structure could be absolutely the same. The techniques and the activities you use might be different, but the structure would be pretty much the same. What about number two? Let's do number two together. Second is true, people are saying. 
Okay. Uh, young learners are more likely to read texts in the lesson. People think it's true. Yes, yes. Second one, it's true. Young learners, uh, they need guidance. And uh, at, well, at least at the beginning, you need to give them maybe small text and guide their reading, give them time. And uh, this is actually with time limit online. You can teach them to just read or read uh, quickly, scan it, uh, scan the information, scan the text. So yes, second one is true. Number three, adult learners are more likely to read text in the lesson. Yeah, false, exactly, thank you. Very clever audience, thank you very much. So uh, adult learners um, are, even if they're not experienced learners, they can manage reading um, at home themselves. So you don't need to uh, spend time on reading here. As for teenagers, you need to look at your, your group and decide whether they need guidance from you or they can do it themselves. And number four, number four, if the lesson focuses reading for specific information, the learners can do the reading in class. True, people, yeah, people are writing it's true. Uh, yeah, I kind of mentioned it already. So if um, you want to teach them read quickly, how you can control it at home is well quite difficult. So reading online can be a nice thing and you uh, set the time and they read, then you discuss. So things like this will be on online course, which I think even if you know all this, it helps you to sort of get aware. So I found interesting things there. Thank you for your answers. Um, a few things uh, more that you will find on the course. This is an example of a task. So for example, you're watching a video and then uh, in the video, there will be sort of examples how people use these instruments. Um, that's, I think that's about Zoom. So how you can use chat box, how you can use share screen. Uh, so you will see short videos of teachers' lessons and then you can borrow examples for your teaching. So um, I think it's a nice thing. It will look like this. So this is an example of young learners class, a uh, very short video from a teacher and she's drawing, um, you know, this pictures to illustrate um, the difference, I guess, between shoe socks and a t-shirt apparently. And the kid is having fun. Yes, it's an individual class, but you will see group um, classes, group lessons there as examples as well. I'm still talking about future learner course. Okay. So, uh, don't lose me. So I'm still um, showing what happens in the course. Now, uh, let's talk about Zoom. I will not ask you to tell me if you're working in, in Zoom or not, because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if, even if you are not working all the time, you've tried it. Anyway, I want to guide you through and tell, uh, tell you how I use it. If you've never used it, uh, you will have an option to choose whether you like it or not. I'm not advertising it. It's just the platform I use. It just, it just happened. Um, it has lots of beautiful things. So, uh, first of all, you go to zoom.com, which is the main site, the main hub, and you need to create your personal account. So now you need to look at the errors. The blue errors and white errors will guide you on my uh, slides, okay? So, um, uh, you create your personal account here through the mailbox, obviously. When you've created it, uh, this is my account here. I've covered and hidden some information, uh, but yeah, basically this is my account, my starting page. Uh, the first thing you need to do before the lesson, you actually need to plan and organize this room for the lesson or the webinar. It's called uh, like this. So basically you plan a conference. Conference, it's a lesson. And uh, you hit here, right? And then this is what you do, this is the next step. You plan your uh, conference or your lesson. Um, so I call it test one. You call it the way you need like group, uh, Wednesday evening, I don't know, the name of your group, teams, uh, university, whatever. Uh, that's the first thing because if you just say test, 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 of course you will lose it. Then, um, when it happens, you need to set the date and the time. Uh, even if you would like to start the conference, not exactly at this time, it still works. So uh, as far as I understand, this time helps you just to navigate through all the different conferences that you've created. So uh, the time shouldn't be exact, you know, 
So you can do 12 and start a little bit later, uh, so it's absolutely fine. As for the length, uh, I have, um, I don't have a free account, so I pay, it's, uh, I pay $15 a month, uh, and uh, I don't have limit for 40 minutes. Whereas free accounts, unfortunately, they limit you for 40 minutes. If you have short classes, it's fine. If you have longer ones, some people finish 40 minute session, then uh, you sort of get back again. Uh, there is a question, if uh, learners should register, no, they shouldn't. They can follow your link and that's it. I'll show you where the link comes from. So you set the time and if this conference or your lesson is to be repeated, for example, I teach every Monday, Wednesday. So I hit this, uh, uh, well, window here, small window, that it's a repeated conference. And then I play, uh, plan my repeated conference here. So for example, it's um, every week but every week not every day so i plan let's say monday wednesday friday and i want this to uh finish all the schedule of lessons finish by the certain date or after a certain number of weeks uh, so um, when you ask whether students should register i mean they don't need to have an account in zoom right they just need to follow the link and if you create it with a password they need to hit the password or it could be just without any password so they just follow the link um, and uh, they get in so uh yeah here is um the window for the password if you need it it usually goes there automatically zero 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 that's from me uh you can manually put it there or it just the i like when it's automatic by the uh, you know by the program so uh, the rest uh, I don't even touch so that's all goes automatically mm. and the last thing that I would really strongly recommend you to use is the last button uh, here when it's sort of a waiting room and I use this uh, every time with every class uh, why because waiting room means that when you uh, turn on your webinar um, room and you start your lesson you might need a few moments to you know get together to get prepared maybe again upload something on your computer open some windows check and so on if the students are already there they will see you doing this some students come uh, before they come earlier so i use this uh, waiting room so basically they go online but they do not get into the webinar room yet and then i basically let them in so i like this very much uh okay few questions here um, if we pay for zoom with the whole school then we won't have limitation on 40 minutes that's true I work on my own not from school so um, I talk from a private you know uh, perspective um, so should you send the link each time before the lesson starts here is what I'm saying if you have a class that repeats and you put it here that it's a repeating class there will be the same link for every class that repeats so you just send it once and say, uh, tell your students that, guys, please save the link. We're going to use it again. So that's it. If you uh, start it, you know, every time, you need to send it, obviously, again. Um, then, um, can they use with mobile phones? Yes, they do. And my students, surprisingly, not everyone has a laptop now. I was surprised, honestly. So some students don't have laptops. They use their mobile phones. Not the best option. Tablets work better because of bigger screen, but yes, they can. Um, why students sometimes do not see comments on screen in Zoom? Well, the only question now, or the only answer now I have is that Zoom now has certain um, uh, stress, I would say, because of number of people who start using it. So maybe it's the problems like technicalities uh, inside. Usually everything works fine with me. From tablet, yes, they can use tablet. So, um, as I said, password, um, then uh, waiting room, uh, and this is when you create the conference. This is how it's going to look. Um, you uh, have the final page here. If you want, and you obviously need to send the uh, invitation to your students, you copy it here, copy the invitation, and um, this uh, blue area, and at the top, uh, start the conference that's where you start it if you um, don't want to start it now basically it will be on your zoom in your personal account under the tab conferences so you go there and you find it
So now let's imagine we started the conference and this is my test uh, trial conference from yesterday. Uh, it's not with my face, sorry, but these are um, some views from, from um, Britain, White Cliffs of Dover. I hope you enjoy that. So the most important things here, on the left, um, bottom left, we have a microphone and a camera. Uh, you can turn it off and on, obviously. Then uh, here we have um, uh, participants. Uh, by the way, I should say that I, my computer is Mac, so the way my uh, screen looks might be a little bit different from yours, but the logic is still the same, okay? So I'm explaining the overall situation here. So uh, here we have uh, the tab invite because I don't have any participants yet. So usually you have uh, people here, like six participants, 10 participants. If you have a waiting room, uh, under this tab, under this sign, you will see people like uh, blinking and saying that participant is waiting, participant is waiting, and you just hit accept and they get into the webinar. Um, then uh, if you uh, hit this icon with um, participants, you will see a list of them to the right. Uh, also, um, the green button is demonstration of the screen. I will show you it later how I use it. And then under three buttons here, three dots, what we have. Um, we have uh, very important things. We have chat. Uh, to open chat, uh, you need to find it and then you can uh, chat with your students. So uh, chat uh, works nicely because you can send uh, messages to everyone or you can send messages to individual students. And I use it in this way. I send, um, let's say, small task to one student, then to another, and they need, let's say, to exchange information, like information gap. Yesterday, uh, I sent every student, I have five teams, every student got a message with a few words they had to define. So I gave them time to prepare, they explained their words, define them, and other students guessed. So that's how we you know, repeated vocabulary through the chat. Also, students can send messages in chat, obviously, and they can write their answers. Uh, my favorite thing is session rooms or breakout rooms. So these are the rooms um, uh, that, as far as I know, you, you cannot use it in the free version. You need to pay. Yeah, breakout rooms work only in the um, paid account. So the idea is um, maybe now they've changed, you know, because they're now um, uh, making it bigger. My colleague yesterday told me that we cannot, uh, I cannot check it because I have, I don't have a free account. Uh, so um, I recommend checking before, you know, buying. So um, how I use session halls, session rooms, breakout rooms. Uh, technically it's quite difficult, oh sorry, quite, quite easy, quite easy to do what I'm saying. So you create uh, these breakout rooms and you can do it uh, automatically or manually. Again, now I don't have any participants, that's why you see zero here, uh, but uh, normally you obviously have here a number of people. You can create as many chat rooms or breakout rooms as you want, um, and you change the number here, and you create this um, session rooms. If you do it manually, basically mm, you uh, can, these are just, let's imagine I've decided to create many, many breakout rooms, I have a huge room, a uh, huge group of students, and then you um, nominate who is going there. So if you hit here, uh, there will there'll be a separate window that will tell you that who goes where. Bob and 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 Jane and Mark they go to room number one. Then um, you allocate room number two and so on. And then you say um, open all. Uh, the, the chat rooms and everyone goes automatically there or uh, they need to say yes and uh, they will be moved to the breakout room. I like breakout rooms very much because um, I've used it uh, now in two options. First, uh, I give a task for everyone the same, even three options. One task for everyone, they go and discuss uh, and because it's um, a smaller group uh, talking, I like it. I go uh, one by one to every breakout room and monitor. So I do the same thing as I did in class. And it's even easier to monitor because uh, I don't, I'm not being distracted by other people talking. So I actually love it. Second thing, I give different groups different tasks uh, or different information to discuss. Uh, and when they go back, they actually share. 
uh, they could be discussing parts of the text and then they share these parts of the text when they go back to the main uh, room. And uh, example number three, what I do, I um, take students one by one, it works in small groups obviously, uh, to have some private small uh, talk. Yesterday I did it with my teenagers, uh, five students in a group. Four students were checking their homework, which was quite massive, and I took one by one students to have a one minute speaking presentation on a topic we studied. So that's how I use it. Um, well, what else? A few things here. Um, a demonstration of the screen, that's one of the uh, most favorite things. Uh, when you hit this button, you will see this uh, screen. Uh, you will always have these four at the top. So you always have your desktop, you always have whiteboard, uh, some other things I'm actually not using and I don't think you need them, and some other things you have uh, open on your computer. Now it's a book on, uh, well, Think, the book we're using with my teenagers. Uh, about uh, showing videos, I uh, promised I will tell you. So if you put this tick here at the bottom, it means that uh, the um, audio, like the, the sound from the computer, will be uh, used by the students as well, and that's they, how they can hear better. Uh, I know there's still problems with connection, videos do not always work, but I've used it two times already, and both times it worked, so I recommend trying, okay? Um, well, uh, what else? Let me uh, sh uh, say a few things about whiteboard, demonstrating it, and then I'll look at the chat questions, okay? So this is the whiteboard that you can um, share with your students. What you can do here, if you um, use this panel at the top uh, with, um, you know, commenting tools, you can write here, you can put ticks, crosses, questions, hearts, whatever. You can draw, draw as if you were drawing on a, you know, simple board. So I, and I've done this within a, a minute or something. So whiteboard I use uh, when, let's say, I want to, give feedback on mistakes. So I write a sentence and I want students to put a tick or a cross there. Actually, they can put comments on the whiteboard as well. Uh, sometimes it's inbuilt and it, it just happens automatically. Sometimes they need to check some um, uh, settings, again, at the top here, so they can uh, leave comments. So I guess that would be under this three dots here. Uh, they go there and leave comments and they can put ticks, crosses. Let's say you write sentences. Okay, guys, choose the right ones, choose the wrong ones. They can even draw if you want to use this one. So that's using whiteboard. Sharing screen through demonstration of the screen. You can show pictures. So this is a file I, I used yesterday with my teens. Uh, we were reading a text about a magic lantern and the history of uh, films like silent films and so on. So these are the words I want them to uh, remember from the text they read at home. So I showed uh, the file with pictures. So the file is on my computer. I open it up and I demonstrate it through share screen option in Zoom, okay? I don't send it anywhere. Also, uh, a few games that I played. So this is my group um, of teens and I actually played Hangman with them the same as we play uh, on the board. My students like it. Uh, so this is a mixed ability group with the uh, pre-B1, B1 level. And uh, I created this um, hangman uh, words online and opened uh, through my computer, through the link, I went online and I shared the screen online. And when I was, they were telling me the letters, I was pressing them and they were playing basically through me again, through the demonstration of the screen. I liked it. And um, another thing that I would recommend, um, it's, um, I've seen many teachers using it now. Um, it's a um, uh, word uh, wheel, so-called. So this is the wheel with a speaking activity. And um, I'll show you where it comes from. So I created this wheel with questions I wanted my students to answer. I introduced these pictures here, so you can create this wheel yourself. And uh, the wheel is a speaking, um, well, sort of activity for my students. So I spin it, it in real life, it goes live, it spins, and then uh, it uh, well, chooses, chooses the question, 
And I nominate that, okay, Vasya, you're answering this question, Peti answering that question. I give them time to prepare and then they present their answers. So to create this, to create, yeah, it's just a bigger version, you go to wordwall.net, wordwall.net, and actually that's only one of the options, one of the options here, that random wheel that I've used, and can you see how many other things you can find here? That's amazing, and mm, I haven't even opened all this to try. Uh, there are some inbuilt mm, trial versions there, but topics obviously are not the ones you need. To do it for free, you can have you can make five templates uh, for free. Then obviously you need to to pay. So wordwall.net. Okay. So I like it for speaking. Let me look quickly at the chat. Um, okay. Should I accept invitations from all the students? Will they be able to join without it? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Invitations, you mean, well, if you have the waiting room, uh, as I mentioned earlier, yes, you need to accept every single student. Uh, but it, it's like one click. It doesn't bother, well, at least me. Uh, if it bothers you, avoid the um, waiting room or this sort of invitation room uh, and let everyone in. But then they might get to the room um, uh, the moment you got there, and I, I don't like it. I want a few moments, you know, to sort of get prepared. Um, okay. Um, uh, basically, breakout rooms is like working in groups or in pairs. Exactly. It's a, a tool to, to be able to work in pairs. They can hear each other. Um, teacher can switch from uh, one room to another. You cannot be everywhere at the same time, the same as in class. You cannot hear to everyone, right? Even if you eavesdrop, you still focus on one group. So you switch and move from one room to another, you make notes. You can actually de demonstrate uh, the whiteboard in each breakout room as well. And on this board, you can write, okay guys, that's a beautiful talk, but I would like to share a few things I heard and you give feedback on their mistakes in the breakout room or for the whole class when everyone gets back. Um, so there is a comment here. I heard some students from other classes sometimes go to different classes. How come? I don't know. That's quite weird. Uh, only if there is a link available and no password, nothing, then everyone can come. Otherwise, that's quite strange. Um, okay. People like the will. It's good. Mm. Do the students need to have a webcam? Uh, webcam is usually inbuilt in their devices unless it's broken. Well, uh, I usually ask them to turn it on because I think that's that's important. Okay, uh, also what I use, it's just a nice site. I don't explain here how I use it. Uh, just check it out if you like. It's an app, not actually an app. It's more like a site, uh, Answer Garden, um, where you can create uh, word clouds online and they create them uh, like live at the same time. Then I share the screen and show the word cloud they created. I did it with my... Um, first year students at university and then we discuss it so what clouds online if you like this check answer garden okay um so another thing that i discovered a few days ago i'm still learning uh it's um a poll online poll where you can ask your students their opinion or something else so uh before it appears in the zoom here you need actually to tick a button in the settings in your personal account online. So go online to your personal account, um, to the platform, find this online polls, tick it, and then you will have it here. So uh, I created this super simple um, poll here. I was just playing, tried to figure out whether students liked it or not. As you see, it wasn't my best lesson, probably. <laughs> so I was hoping that it's better than online, but of course, a lot of people still feel that um, offline is, is good and they like face-to-face. -face. So uh, I uh, thought first that polls, how would I use them? Now I'm thinking that uh, actually you can use this as anonymous uh, test for your students. Let's say you are dealing with some grammar, you give them a sentence with a gap, let's say, and then variance of answers. And if you have a bigger group, it's nice because they give their answers and you see actually what most people think and uh, if there are certain 
mistakes that are repeated, you will see it, even the percent of this. Um, true, false, um, um, it's, yeah, it's for the, I, I, I guess, apparently, yeah, it's for the paid account again, um, this polls. Um, yes, you can create the poll in advance and then uh, sort of get it ready um, and then open it up when you start a lesson. So, these are polls, I liked it. Um, now, uh, last thing, when students enter the conference, they usually have this um, identification number. So this is the number that is actually in the invitation. Remember, I showed you before, there is this um, invitation to the conference, so they have identification number, they put it in and um, uh, sort of go to the webinar. If uh, you put password, so they also need to fill in the password. So it's quite simple, you know, and the same um, actually link enter the conference exists in your uh, account on Zoom if you are attending someone else's conference. You're not teaching all the time, right? So if you want to go to someone else's Zoom, uh, at the top there will be this enter the conference button and you then enter the identification number and you go to the conference you want to attend or the lesson you want to watch, I don't know. Okay, so um, this is it about Zoom. Uh, if there are more questions, please um, ask. And now I'm going to share some more uh, resources that some of them I've been using over the years. Some of them I, I'm still, you know, trying to use. Some of them are quite new to me as well, but I would like to share anyway. Hopefully they will be useful. Okay, let me look at chat. Um, Okay, video and audio sharing um, in, in Zoom. Uh, and cost of Zoom. Okay, uh, let's start with the easy question. Cost is the simplest one would be $15 um, dollars a month, which I think, as for me, I think it's manageable if now everything happens through Zoom and online. Uh, as for showing audio, like videos and audios, again, I would say that I don't do audios online uh, because I don't see the point. Uh, if we talk about videos, there are two options. You can send the link to them and they watch on their own devices, but then you ask them to mute their microphones um, so that not everyone, like, they do not distract each other. And then they come back and you have some discussion. Or the way I did it twice, there is this um, small button when you demonstrate the screen, there is a small button, um, like small window, which says, synchronize the sound of the computer. Uh, I don't think I can find the slide now, it's just far away, okay? But you'll get the presentation, you can find it there. So the small uh, window, tick it, and people, uh, students will hear the sound better. Synchronize the sound, and then it works fine, okay? Um, right, then, uh, a few other resources. Digital teacher, I don't know if you heard of it, if you haven't, please check it out. So the digitalteacher.com. As you can imagine, it's about teachers going digital, becoming digital, going online. Uh, what it provides, it gives a huge number of resources and things. So if you look here at my slide, uh, first, there is a framework to figure out how digital minded you are, how um, like what you need from digital resources so you can evaluate new needs here. Second huge block, it's training where you can develop your digital skills. I actually try to search through things I might be interested in and there is so much going on there. So if you have some time, maybe not this week, maybe later when you sort of breathe in and, and slow down a little bit, you can check this out, training. And product review, that's also an amazing thing because it gives you reviews of many different apps and many different sites uh, that you can use for online teaching, online support, whether you teach exam or whether you teach just normal class. So a few uh, slides here will show you, this is just uh, a list of things they offer. So there is again Zoom here, uh, Chatterpix. If you teach young learners, that's a very fun thing to do. And over the last week on Instagram, I've seen like dozens of teachers using it. I don't use it because I don't need, I don't teach young learners. Uh, this is basically when you have a picture and the app helps you to 
a sort of uh, pretend that this um, character in this picture is talking. So there is a mouth that is opening and it synchronizes with the sound. And so basically uh, your students, your young learners give voice to certain characters and it could be a story, a song. So it's much fun. I've seen the results. It's nice, like a singing starfish or um, any other character that they like. So check it out, Chatterpix. The rest, honestly, I haven't used, so I don't know what to tell you here. I've checked some of them, but I haven't used them in practice. Uh, but the, the, um, uh, you can start with, again, slowly and choose some of those. Next um, uh, like slide here also shows you certain um, sites that, again, you can find from Digital Teacher. Uh, I've been using Padlet, this one here. So Padlet, it's like online board for collecting many, many things, resources, presentations, books for certain groups of students. I haven't been using it for teens, but I've been using it for almost a year now with my university students. I also have paid account there because the free one doesn't satisfy me with all the things I need to do. I post my homework there, I post files they need to upload, I post uh, videos, links to videos, presentations, huge help for me and I don't need to do this back and forth in mailing, I hate it. So this one, very nice to sort of put everything online, you students go there, take everything they need and don't ask you, you know, it's kind of, uh, Padlet, I love it. Word wall, that's actually the one I've just shown you. Uh, with the um, uh, words, that spinning wheel that I've created. And as you saw on that side, there are many other things you can check. The rest, um, again, haven't used it for teaching. It's only my second week, you know, so I kind of, <laughs> I'm trying to slow down too. So again, check it out if, if, you, um, if you like. Okay, people asking for price for Padlet. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for this question. I don't remember now. Uh, it's it's not um, much, I would say, that's maybe, I might be wrong, about 500 rubles, 300 rubles, pro okay, I might be wrong here, so please check, I'm sorry, I um, didn't think, uh, I so I haven't checked it. Um, Another site, again, this one is quite popular uh, with, with schools, actually. And it's called Pen Friends, uh, which you can find through cambridgeenglish.org, or you simply Google Pen Friends and you get redirected there. It's very good for um, preparation for exams uh, because it's basically reading and writing, mostly writing skills, writing uh, short notes and letters. And that's one of the skills we have in exams, by the, by the way, right? Uh, also, of course, you can use this for everyday teaching, not necessarily for exams. So, Pen Friends. It's, um, uh, it works for lower levels. So if we talk about exams, that would be sort of um, A2, that's key for schools, and B1, that's preliminary for schools. You can also use it for movers in a way. Uh, so the whole idea, what happens with this site, it's three very uh, simple steps. You register your school, you decide uh, how you're going to operate, so uh, how many letters a month you're going to send, who you're going to send them to. You find a partner school somewhere in the world, so you sort of pair up with another school somewhere in the world, and then you upload uh, cards, send them, basically. So, um, quite simple. I know schools uh, and classes who do that. I... Uh, did it, I, I like registered a long time ago, I did it once at school, but since then I haven't been using it, but many people are really happy with this uh, resource. So um, as a result, you might get something like this, uh, when people exchange their writings, it could be digital or it could be handwritten. Handwritten, I think, is, is my favorite, I think it's much more mm, uh, interesting, you know, and much more beautiful and authentic. So pen friends, okay, for drilling writing, teaching writing, and teaching authentic real life communication, um, that's that's a good one. Another one, um, it's learning English. Learning English, uh, also you can um, 
reach it from cambridgeenglish.org or simply Google it, Learning English Cambridge, and you will find this site. Uh, this one, uh, it's even more for more skills. It's not only reading and writing, it's for all the skills. And it, it's, again, sort of a hub of different resources that you can use for your learners. And again, for exam preparation at higher levels as well, uh, and for lower levels and for everyday classes, how it works. Uh, there is a filter here, so you can choose the time uh, that you are, you're willing to spend on it. You can change the level. There are three uh, levels, but as you see, basic would probably be something like A2 mm, under B1, independent B1, B1 plus, um, closer to B2, proficient B2, C1, right? You can choose the skill uh, you want to practice, develop, and then uh, you put these filters and then you kind of get the resources that will fit these criteria. Uh, I uh, use it with my students not very often, again, because there are so many resources now, but you might be interested in, there are absolutely different topics and uh, very nice listenings which are authentic or close to authentic. And as I know, it's not always easy to find those, you know, on YouTube. So why not try this? Uh, learning English, okay? And you can set it as homework. Uh, I can imagine you somehow can use it um, online because, for example, grammar practice might happen online, uh, you know, just live when you demonstrate your screen and you do something there. But I would say that works better for individual learners. In groups, I don't really imagine how to do that. But again, you might try. So, um, okay, let's uh, look at chat. Maybe there is something else people want to know. Um, okay. Mm. So people asking how to give feedback. Uh, well, if you mean generally, feedback can be can be given in very well in various sorts and, and ways. I use whiteboard when I share my screen in Zoom. I sometimes write something in chat to every student. Obviously, I say it orally. Sometimes I write something you know, in a word file and then I share this file with my students and share this. Uh, so I mean. There are so many options and peer uh, feedback, peer reviewing. Mm. Yeah, uh, let's go back. People ask the previous page uh, for a second. Yeah, so learning English. Learning English, that's a nice resource uh, on grammar and on different levels and speaking, uh, listening, all the skills. So very nice one. Check it out. Okay. Mm. Okay, then uh, a few more things. So actually, we are we are kind of uh, within time. Uh, maybe I think a few minutes more. So another one: um, write and improve. Okay, uh, you might be familiar with um, other online resources where you can feel uh, like post your text, and it will be proved, approved, and corrected. This one um, is for students, so uh, they can practice their writing skills there and they get instant feedback from the system. And it's not like the system corrects everything. The system sort of uh, gives hints that maybe there is a problem here and there is some explanation uh, and uh, each works at different levels. So if you haven't tried it yet, please try it. It's very nice. As for uh, teachers, why it's good? Because you can create assignments there and students can create their writings there because uh, writings can be saved and you can see the progress. You can create the class there and progress can be seen as the whole class. So um, you can get reports there. So it's, it's a whole platform. Uh, it takes time to figure out how it works. So maybe don't start it like right now. Uh, start it slowly after you figure out the main things to do, but it's absolutely beautiful um, site for um, all exam writings. Very nice because you drill. Um, we know that for exams, sometimes we need to drill writing again and again and again. We don't have that writing practice in our everyday class. For exams, we need it. So that's probably where you can go. Uh, and even um, uh, younger children can figure out how to do it. I mean, younger teens, 
um, so it's very nice. And um, this is an example how it might look. So there was a text created. You see there are um, certain notes, and the program will be telling you, like, is the spelling correct? Did you mean something, something? And then you need to rewrite it. You need to edit your text and then check it again. Uh, spell check, grammar check, and then the system will tell you if if it is happy with it or not. It's um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a very nice resource here. Um, another one. Now, more specifically, that was uh, for writing. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can uh, also um, go to Cambridge English. Uh, CambridgeEnglish.org. Uh, through it, you'll be redirected. Yes. Um, listening resource. This one uh, specifically for higher levels, uh, and it has seven episodes, seven main episodes that uh, you can choose for your students. They're not very long, but um, it's like series of episodes. Uh, but uh, what I like, if you don't feel very comfortable, maybe you are you're starting teaching or you want, you know, some new ideas, you want to refresh your, you know, teaching, uh, there are lesson plans available there for these listening lessons. So you can download in PDF in one click, it's all for free, you can download this uh, lesson plans. You see there is a, a part of it and uh, Plan your lesson around it. Again, you don't need to follow it strictly, but it might give you a few ideas how to use it um, for homework or maybe even somehow build it in into your online session. Again, that depends on the level. Mm. Okay, finally about app. Apps are, um, well, we all use apps, right? So uh, at some point. So this one, it's quite new. It's called ExamLift. And this is specifically for exam preparation. That's why I'm mentioning it at the end. Uh, it's for B1 uh, preliminary for schools, students. Uh, what I have noticed is that uh, some students actually like it for everyday practice as well. So even if you're not doing exams, you might, uh, you know, use it and again, set tasks there or um, ask your students to practice a little bit more, send you screenshots of the tasks they, they've um, uh, made. So again, it's up to you how to use it. So uh, exam lift, a nice one. I did it myself. A few tasks were actually quite tricky. Uh, there was something like speed reading. There is a text that appears very quickly and you really need to read it so quickly. And then uh, they check your understanding. Well, even for me, it was challenging. So nice, I, I liked it. Um, so, exam lift. In uh, App Store for Apple and I guess for Android as well, just where you download all your apps, okay? And um, a few words about young learners. Uh, if you teach young learners, if you've been teaching for a long time, you might be familiar with this resource, World of Fun. Worldoffun.cambridge.org, that's, uh, again, a huge hub with a lot of information on teaching young learners. Uh, there are divisions here for starters, movers, and flyers, so different levels, pre-A1, A1, and A2. So, and there are videos there, games, uh, some PDFs to download, lesson plans, flashcards, uh, I don't know, anything you can imagine. So I don't even know what, what they have with young learners. That's, that's not my exactly my area of expertise, but um, I know teachers love it and use it. Uh, show some videos to kids, so check it um, out too, okay? Um, that's World of Fun. And uh, I think the last resource I'm going to talk about, that is Weekly. Uh, weekly is uh, also about exams. This is Exam Preparation Planner. Uh, I think it's a very interesting thing, and if you're doing exams, you might want to actually check this. So, um, how it happens. There is this um, box here at the bottom. Um, so, you go to the site, you choose an exam you're preparing for, let's say, preliminary for schools, FCE for schools, or whatever. You choose the number of weeks available. So, let's say you want to have this for three weeks or eight weeks or whatever. And then you uh, put down the preparation time. Maybe you have an express course, and maybe you, I don't know, 
whatever you're teaching. Uh, you put the number of hours uh, per week that you are willing to spend. I mean, your students are willing to spend on this preparation. And then they give you the plan for every week. So it looks like this. Mm, week one, week two, week three, and so on. Well, depending on how many weeks you've chosen. Uh, and after, uh, under each uh, button here, uh, there is a link with lots of resources. Let's say week two, if you open up, there will be, let's say, writing, writing test overview. There will be a lesson plan in PDF that you can download and use it. So I think it's a huge help for those who are preparing for exams. So um, again, uh, try to maybe build it in slowly. Try for one week, a few weeks, see if you like it. Uh, and um, it helps planning. Basically, it's a planning tool. And as I said earlier, planning is a crucial thing now. So um, yeah, you might like it. So um, uh, don't forget the main site we always go to, it's cambridgeenglish.org. And uh, I don't have pictures here, but I'm sure you're familiar with Cambridge English TV or YouTube channel, uh, YouTube channel for like from Cambridge. All the uh, speaking sessions of exams are there. Uh, new format of key preliminary, uh, FC speaking, all speaking for kids, young learners, everything is there. Webinars as well, uh, different uh, helpful, you know, um, online um, materials, like video materials also there. Uh, so please uh, don't forget about Cambridge English TV, okay? So uh, I think that is it and I'm, Almost on time, so I'm good today with my timing. Last thing, uh, and a quick reminder, please take it slow, okay? Uh, take it very slow, um, so don't rush with trying everything out. One of the things that, um, from I'm telling you this as a psychologist, uh, the more you try things, the, the like if you wanna try new things all at the same time, it, it gives you more anxiety and stress. That's not what we need now. So uh, what I've chosen for myself, the way I choose a few instruments that I want to use this week or next week, this class or next class, and I slowly try them out, uh, reflect if I liked it or not. Uh, if I want to ask my students, I create this online poll. I ask them, how did you like this activity? Great, wonderful, uh, not very much. So, and then I analyze the results and plan my next lesson. So step by step, I would say. These are my, uh, Obviously, if you have any contact uh, questions, ask. And these are my contacts. You can uh, write to me. You can add me on Instagram. Uh, I post things there as well. Uh, there is uh, on Instagram a short video on Zoom and word clouds, actually, how I use them online. Uh, so yeah, any other ideas you want to share or ask, please, please do. Thank you, too. A lot of thank you messages. I'm, I'm happy that was useful. I wasn't sure how much you know, but thought that maybe guiding you through slowly would be better. Um, right. Well, if there are no more questions, I will wait a few minutes, but if there are no more questions, I'm saying goodbye to all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have more classes today, actually I do, so good luck to us with online teaching and good connection. <laughs> so, uh, and if you want to share uh, you know, the results of your teaching, please don't hesitate, contact me. Um, I'm more active on Instagram, so maybe you can um, share your you know, thoughts, ideas there, what worked for you, what didn't. Uh -huh. Is there any list of all these services? Oh, that's a very good question. Sorry, I didn't think about that, but thank you. Maybe I should, I should put a list. No, I didn't, sorry. Not, not on this presentation, but I think we can create this, obviously, if you need that. The app, yes, it's for free. Uh, I think when I downloaded, it was still on trial, the app Exam Lift. Um, I can actually check it now whether... Mm, I think that uh, the more you do, the more levels open up, as far as I remember. I know I haven't paid anything. And yeah, you play at certain level, then next uh, one opens up. So as far as I know, it's for free. At least I haven't paid anything. 
How long is your break between the classes? Uh, well, it depends. Sometimes five minutes and it's horrible because I have um, offline, sometimes I need to uh, be very uh, exact with my timing. Students come, students go, almost no break because of like, let's say I have two groups starting at six and we don't want to uh, hold them later than um, nine and the class is one hour 30 minutes. So basically it's one hour 30, these guys go, these guys come in, one hour 30 again. And now I'm doing online the same, almost the same timetable because everyone is used to it. I might, you know, move it a little bit to have longer breaks, but 10, 15 minutes between the breaks, sometimes five, uh, that's my usual thing. Unless I have bigger breaks, it could be three hours, but then it's just, um, my, my, my schedule is quite, you know, it has, it has gaps and breaks inside. Um, thank you. Yes, uh, as far as I know, you will be getting the, the, the presentation. Yes, we will send you the PDF. Uh-huh, yeah, so we will share the materials in two, three days. And uh, please understand, it, it's like a huge uh, amount of, 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 of people and, and technical, the, like the systems don't work as, as well as we want them to. And all the problems with uh, sound today, they were due to the, you know, um, uh, connection and, and people all being online these days. So um, I'm happy I could help. Okay, any more questions to me? Because all the technical stuff, like certificates and everything, that's, um, I cannot answer those. Yes, you will get the certificates, you see, they, they tell you that you can get the certificates. So if anything else, again, um, contact me. Uh, I see some people, yeah, finding me on Instagram, that's great. That is great. So good luck with your teaching again. How often do you use these apps on your lesson? Well, every, every lesson, that's what I'm saying, every lesson, not all of them, obviously. Yesterday, I used, with my teens, I used the word walls, the wheel, which I actually created specifically for them. I used Hangman. Uh, I used, um, uh, well, I always use share screen option and I, like, in Zoom. I used polls yesterday. I used breakout rooms yesterday. So, yeah. Mm. As for special apps, uh, not so often, well, depending on what we, what we study. If I need like some nice listening, I'll go to uh, one site. If I need to do some, uh, you know, find some other exam material, I will go to another one. So sites that, of course, I cannot use all of them every, every time. Uh, do you have any students with disabilities? No, um, I think uh, I had, well, not I think I had a few students with, with um, dysgraphia, uh, but that's that's it so far. I, I don't teach uh, students SEN. They're called special educational needs students. I have a certificate. I kind of got the training, but I've never taught them. Um, so no, the answer is no. Thank you. Yay. Nice. I'm happy to hear that it was useful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. If I, I, I cannot, yeah, I can only say thank you because I don't have any Im images here to send you like happy faces and everything, but okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I will have a good day too. I will have some rest, then another class, then preparation for the next class. So it's, yeah, life now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, that is great to see all of you here. Mm hmm maybe someday I'll do a seminar well I do seminars actually I do seminars as well and I usually announce them um, again on Instagram or on Facebook uh, so yeah 
I, I present at conferences a lot as well. In Moscow, yes, I, I, I do in Moscow, but sometimes I do travel. I had a few ones in Kazakhstan, I think last year or two years ago. Uh, I do travel to, to different cities in, in Russia as well. Yeah, so kind of seminars, teacher trainings, we, we do that. Uh, B2 level, what's the best step for preparation? Oh, that's a very good question. As far as I know, there isn't uh, app for, for, from Cambridge. I've used several apps, not specifically for B1, uh, the, I mean, not for Cambridge exam, but uh, like higher level advanced something uh, apps. But all of them turn out, uh, well, it's like you have a few options for free, then you need to pay. So I haven't, personally, I haven't found any app for B2. Sorry. I uh, Sometimes I find some nice online things, just online, I mean, a site. And if I think it's good, I send it to my students, but no app, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm saying goodbye to you guys. And um, do you like the idea of teaching all of us as students just to show how it works? Well, um, I cannot teach all of you, obviously, but uh, I try to have the slides with very detailed, you know, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, on my Instagram, there is a short video, like seven minutes video on, on how Zoom, uh, like where to click and, and everything. Uh, my best advice is actually uh, pair up with your colleagues. Two, three people would be enough. You don't need a huge group because I we tried it in big groups. It doesn't work. Uh, pair up uh, together with a couple of uh, colleagues and try everything out. We did it before. There were four, four of us or five of us and we spent one hour and a half Try every single button and you get the full picture. So uh, just trial and error, I would say. That's the best, okay? Um, okay, so thank you very much. I'm saying goodbye and you'll get the materials within two or three days. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.